Yeah, just appreciate you guys jumping on. I hope you guys are doing well and had a good holiday. Um, it's been great to get back with the girls. It's um, it's just an interesting year. I don't know how how else to put it. Um, you know, we we went from quarantine to a week full of games to Christmas break, and um, you know, just trying to get that conditioning uh, threshold back is has been big after Christmas break. Uh, got a lot of things we need to work on, but I really, really uh, enjoy this team. I think they've got a high ceiling. Uh, we certainly understand uh, how tough the SEC is going to be, and uh, got a really good uh, Alabama squad coming in here tomorrow. Uh, really impressed with you know what Christie's done over the last couple of years, and and they've got uh, just great balance on their team. They play really hard. They're super organized. Uh, they've got a nice blend of of perimeter kids and and uh, post player kids and they rebound really well, um, can push and transition, have good athleticism. Um, it, it's gonna be a, a test for us, but all games are in the SEC. Okay, we'll turn to questions. It looks like the first one's gonna come from Colin O'Brien from Jeff City News Tribune. Go ahead, Colin. Hey coach, how did you handle the Christmas break and, and what players were doing and where they're able to go? I know you've got Mama, Shannon, and Sarah Rose, who probably couldn't go home and see family, but other than that. Yeah, you know, I just felt like um, I never wavered on that. I, I knew as, as long as we were able, we wanted to send our kids home. I think that that time's really important. Uh, I would have a hard time being at home with my family and, and not allowing them to do that. And, and in addition to that, not being able to do something special here for them because of um, you know, social distancing. So we knew uh, for a while, we just didn't know how long we'd be able to get them back. We, you know, tried to pick up an extra game, which we did on the 20th. Uh, there was, uh, if we couldn't get the 20th, we were going to play on the 21st. And so just that game schedule is the only holdup we had in regards to the length of, of their time at home. We actually did find a way to, to send mama home, which was fantastic. Um, I think, you know, she knew that time was going to be short, uh, but she really, you know, I think it recharged her, fueled her tank a little bit. I had to come back and spend a couple of days in quarantine, which we knew um, ahead of time that that was going to happen. It was, it, we, we weren't able to get Shannon and um, Sarah Rose home, which was really unfortunate, uh, but their travel is a little bit more extensive than going to Spain. And so Shannon's been around the block, you know, she was prepared for it. Uh, Sarah Rose got here a little bit later uh, than the majority of them. And so, um, you know, they, they handled it really well. I uh, had a chance to, you know, I think us coaches kind of swapped out who had them over and enjoyed having them in, in that setting away from the, the arena and, and made sure they had masks on and uh, all that good stuff. But it, it was good for our girls to get home. Next one's from Eric Blum, Columbia Daily Tribune. Go ahead, Eric. Hey, Robin, I uh, got two questions. First off, just everybody's healthy and good to go for tomorrow night as of now? As of now, that's the that's the key uh, statement. Yeah. As of now, um, we're in pretty good shape and uh, had a good energized practice today. I know we're excited to get started tomorrow. And then second, I know you're probably maybe only focusing on Alabama, or maybe even into Arkansas on Sunday, but has it been harder this year to kind of see the scope of who's good in the SEC with playing different amounts of games and just starts and stops and all that? Or is it kind of looking up at the – I guess South Carolina's Mississippi States as usual, if those are the programs you want to chase to get your goals done. Um, you know, it, 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 it hasn't been hard. I think the SEC, and I know I say this every year, I get it, but I, I think the SEC this year is probably as strong as it's ever been. I think uh, some of those teams that struggled a little bit last year, um, you know, have had some turnover in the roster, have added some transfers, uh, their young kids are more experienced. I, I, just from top to bottom, I've been really, really impressed with with uh, what these teams bring to the table. And so, again, you know, you can't look ahead. Uh, every night's going to be a dog fight. Um, this is an interesting week in, in regards to prepping for two teams. So, number one, we haven't had a road game yet, which is, you know, kind of crazy that you're going into SEC play and you haven't even played on the road yet. So that that'll be a little bit challenging and a little bit different. I think, um, you know, the second piece is because of how Christmas break fell, uh, we're going to have to take a, a day off on Friday regardless. And so that really cuts down on your prep time against 
an Arkansas team that plays, you know, just maybe a little bit different than most teams. And so, uh, but it is what it is. Uh, Got to control what you can control. And, and um, you know, sometimes it's better to put the focus on what you need to do instead of other teams. Michael Howie from the Maneaters up next. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, I hope you're enjoying the holidays. Um, I'm curious, has this current dry spell of games felt at all similar to the, the dry spell at the beginning of the season? Obviously, you don't have a COVID outbreak right now to deal with, but has it still felt the same or is it a totally different situation? You know, it's, uh, I'll be honest with you. I think it's, um, we just we just had a little team meeting today and just talked about perspective because I think, I think this is a really hard time for our student athletes. And, you know, on one hand, uh, they're so thankful and, and so blessed to be able to do what they do, but there's still a lot of unknown out there. And when you, you know, look, uh, there's, there's a, a few teams that uh, have just kind of called it uh, on the season and they'll no longer be playing. And so, you know, that, that question always is in the back of their head and it, it kind of just looms of, of, will we have a season? Will we get a play? And so just really trying to talk your players through uh, controlling the controllables and, and uh, being where your feet are one day at a time, uh, being willing to be fluid and, and all of this craziness. And so uh, it, it's been challenging. I would say the dynamics of going from starting practice in quarantine, and then we had a couple weeks and then we played and then we went into quarantine and then we had finals week and then Christmas break. We are way behind our, our conditioning levels now where it needs to be. Uh, in regards to, uh, um, you know, just from a offensive and defensive standpoint, uh, having your sets in, having your situations in, in regards to, uh, you know, late game situations, time hasn't allowed for it. We, we just haven't. But I think there's a lot of teams in this situation. And so, again, just really being mindful of controlling what you can control. Shannon Belt from the Missourians up next. Go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, as you were saying, just kind of ha- uh, trying to control the uncontrollables, despite having kind of a choppy uh, preseason non-conference play, how do you think uh, the schedule last uh, the week before with the four games has uh, prepared you guys for SEC play? You know, I think right now for this team, um, and that's a great question, but I think right now for this team, just having that game experience has been huge. We've got so many new faces and, you know, kids that had to sit out last year that um, just hadn't had court time in a couple of years. And so it's just a different feel than it is um, with what you get in a practice setting. And, you know, you, you add in some transfers and some returning kids and there's just, there's a lot of pieces. I keep talking about these pieces and how do you put it together? And I think having a couple of games under our belt's been huge. I think um, but even with that being said, you know, we went pretty deep to our bench for all those games. And, and so that's a good thing on one hand. I, I do like our depth. I think um, that that's a huge positive for us. Um, but it, and it was hard. The time that Christmas break came, it was like we were just kind of starting to get our, our, our lungs back and our legs back and starting to, you know, maybe uh, get a little bit of chemistry on the court. And then you go on Christmas break. And so. Last couple of days have been hard. I think that's always a hard time for, you know, players coming back. But, you know, we worked ourselves through it. And, and today had a really good day. And, and I know the girls are looking forward to tomorrow. Andrew Kaufman, KMIZ, go ahead. Hey, Coach, just going back to, to, to Mama being able to go back to Spain, just what went into all of that? I imagine that was a logistical uh, challenge to, to make that happen, especially with the quarantining, probably maybe even before and after. You know, it, it was, but so thankful that, you know, all the pieces came together. And so, I mean, there's just so much, you know, it's, and it's hard, it's, it's beyond my understanding, but, you know, you got not only, you know, what we need to do from an SEC standpoint, from a university standpoint, uh, from, from Columbia to Boone County, uh, you know, traveling in and out of the country, what it looks like there, what their quarantine is there the testing protocol, how do we get all that taken care of and stay within the regulations? And so um, there's a, a lot of I's that we had to dot and T's that we had to cross and, and a lot of people that helped us kind of shift through what that was going to look like, if it was even possible. Um, and then we get her to Chicago and, and we get a call that for some reason, her ticket 
uh, when she went to, they were loading the plane. She gives them the ticket. Uh, the, the lady at the, the check-in said, your, your ticket's been declined. It's been canceled. And so this is a kid, a freshman from Spain, thinking she finally gets a chance to go home, uh, just about in tears, thinking, oh my gosh, now what? I'm in Chicago all by myself. I don't know anyone. And, and how are we going to make this work? And so a um, couple phone calls and had to rearrange some things. But long story short, we got her on that plane uh, just in time and she was able to make it home. And, and I know it really, really meant a lot to her. So uh, really, really happy that that could happen. And then just to make sure she is able to play this game. Absolutely. Yep. Was she back at practice today or? She when... was. She was. She had to quarantine a few days. She could still use the facilities. Um, you know, that's a kid that, you know, when we could practice, she was out for probably close to three weeks with a hamstring issue. And I was so impressed with the way she came back. She was on top of, um, you know, just – what we were looking for offensively, uh, the few play calls that we had in defensively, conditioning didn't lose a beat, just her voice from that point guard position. She really handled that time when she couldn't be in practice well. And that's probably what gave me more confidence than anything to feel like even though she's going to have to be in quarantine for a few days and have to get her own conditioning in and her own shots, that she'd be able to come back and, and uh, not miss much of a beat. And so uh, she's a kid that studies the game, that works really hard at her craft. And um, I, I just felt like she could handle it. And I, what I saw today looks good. Colin O'Brien's next, go ahead. Hey coach, you touched on Alabama a little bit, but with Walker and Copeland, um, Walker really being able to stretch the floor from that four and Copeland having a good season uh, inside, just what's the challenge guarding those two? And, and, you know, they're both really good free throw shooters and good rebounders as well. Yeah. Very good free throw shooting team. Very good rebounding team. Um, you know, it's uh, Jasmine's six, three can stretch the court has a high release uh, shoots the heck out of it. Um, you know, and so she makes it, it, it really hard from a defensive standpoint to, um, you know, give any kind of help on any dribble penetration. And that's, you know, they've got some really good pieces. They've got uh, the strength of Jasmine and Copeland, who Copeland's a load inside, uh, very efficient, uh, really does a great job of getting angles. But they've got some perimeter kids that can play downhill um, and, and really put the pressure on you defensively. If you switch, they're high basketball IQ kids. They're going to make that extra pass and, and try and take advantage of a mismatch inside. And they also like to disrupt the flow of, of what you do offensively. They'll switch it up a lot between man and zone and try to keep you on your heels a little bit and kind of second guessing what you need to run. Um, so again, I just, uh, Copeland and, 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 and Jasmine, both really good players, but they've got a strong, strong supporting cast around them as well. I, I know we've seen the, with Conzo squad, the benefit of experience in this season, just how much do you think the, they have a pretty um, older, I guess, group of, of, of players. How much do you think that's helped them get off to that start they've had? Yeah, I think that's huge. I really do. I think any time, any year, right, not just this year, any year that you've got veteran kids coming back that have played together and, and had a lot of experience together definitely helps. And uh, they've got a few more games under their belt than we do, and, and I think that helps. I think um, they were together pretty much, I, I think, and, and I can't remember for sure, but I thought Christy said she had them um, – together most of the summer and, and we did it here um and so there, there no doubt about it that helps that's that's um that, that definitely makes it a little bit more challenging for us but like I said I, I like our pieces it's just a matter of time before we can put them all together and uh, I know our kids you know they know what SEC ball is all about they, they understand what's in front of them and they're looking forward to it Colin if you got another keep going yeah um I was just curious, Coach, is it a concern at all, the, the, the hitting the road for the first time this weekend for conference play? I know you you didn't get a chance to use whatever road plans you have for, for the slew game. Well, yes. Yes and no. Okay, so I haven't thought too much. I would be lying if I didn't say, you know, that thought hasn't been back there. But, you know, for me personally, um, you know, I really think it's important that I'm one game at a time. Um, but – I would say, 
Yes, I think there is great value in the non-conference being able to travel for your freshmen to understand your routine, what that looks like, um, and, and the preparation that goes into playing on the road, the the opportunity to get into you know different facilities and and all of that. But at the same time, okay, so when you can travel, then as a coach, you spin it and you say, hey, it, there's two hoops, one basketball. You're playing five on five. Court's the same length. Let's go play ball. You know, um, sometimes I think we can make too much of it than, than what it really is. And so I know a few, year, a few years ago when we went to play Arkansas, we had some issues with weather and we ended up traveling same day, uh, which is never what we do. Uh, but we really liked that. We thought, golly, if we knew the weather was going to cooperate all the time, let's just as much as we can fly in same day. Now it just makes it tough because you never know what the weather. And so that's not really realistic in SEC travel. Do you imagine taking buses to, to the games that are at least not like Florida or, or that far away? Or do you think with a traveling party as small as a basketball team that, that plane travel is what you're going to do most of the time? Yeah, I think we're, we're going to be, um, have the opportunity to go with flights. You know, I know our trainer and our, our strength and conditioning coach and our ops people have already talked about, um, you know, just the, the seating situation on buses as well as planes and making sure that, you know, we put ourselves in a position where we don't have to worry too much about that contact tracing, at least from a travel standpoint. And so there's just so many moving parts to this whole deal with COVID and, and uh, quarantine and social distancing and the connects on and, and wearing a mask. And uh, it's a lot and it takes a village. And I think our administration has done a tremendous job I think our support staff, our athletic trainers, a uh, lot of lot of hands in the pot in regards to trying to navigate this so we can have a season and certainly appreciate all of them. Okay, I think that'll do it for questions for coach. Thank you very much, coach. For